What if you were afraid of nothing? Nothing. Man, beast, financial, bankruptcy, nothing. Do you understand what that would mean? How would your life have changed? Once you become fearless, life becomes limitless. I'm not afraid of anything. I should be dead by now. I've been run over by a charging buffalo. Got up, chased it down, killed it. Killed a Kodiak bear with a knife. You can't kill me. I believe that with all my heart. You can't kill me. And of course, the people that I've talked about, Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, Rockefeller, Steve Jobs, they're all tough. Snowflakes melt under pressure. In 1986, the average man's handshake pressure was 118 pounds. 2016, 96 pounds. Testosterone levels in sperm counts tested 50 years ago, and today uh, they're producing 60 to 70 percent the amount of testosterone levels in sperm counts as they did. We're dying out. They're deathly afraid of everything. Uh, everybody's scared to death of uh, what might happen. And so they, 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 they want to come across as your friend. It's like my snowflake test. You know, the first question, paraphrasing it, what would you do if somebody spit in your wife's face? And the answers range from, well, I, I try to ascertain what kind of day he was having. And if he had a bad day, I tried to be understanding. I'd be in prison for murder. I would beat the guy to death. Is that what we need today? Everybody no, no, I'm not saying that's me though. Okay. But I am advocating, advocating that the guys act like they had a pair. There's never an easy time to make a hard decision. Never. But what you have to be able to do is pull the trigger, take action. And reading books and listening to podcasts is not taking action. It's just another form of procrastination. The main differentiation between the high performance people is they believe in the extraordinary. Remember yesterday I said, you're never gonna ex exceed your high, highest and wildest expectation. For those of you that wanna be a millionaire, you're never gonna make 10 million. For those of you that wanna be 10 million, you're never gonna make 100 million. For those of you that wanna make 100 million, you're never gonna be a billionaire. Because psychologically, see, your subconscious doesn't know you're full of Your subconscious starts to slow down. When you get it, let's use the 100 million number, at 75, 79, 82, 89, 91, and then you're asleep at 96 million. And you may stumble over the goal at 100 million by accident. I have three regrets in life. One, I'm a combat trained army officer who never saw combat. Two, the night before my mother died, I told her, God damn it, you're not gonna die, quit around. She's dead in the morning. And the third, I didn't set my goals high enough. Jack Welch said it much better than I. There's no such thing as work-life balance. There are work-life choices and you make them and they have consequences. There are consequences that I didn't go to my daughter's, our daughter's six, sweet 16 birthday party. There are consequences. But are they greater than the consequences of you being dirt broke when you die? You ask yourself that. Would you rather make a choice between your daughter's 16th birthday or you being flat broke, huddled up in a corner, homeless, whenever your time comes? You tell me. But conventional wisdom, political correctness has it all backwards. You're a bad person because you missed her birthday, right? You're a bad person because you celebrated Christmas in January, right? Horse And the pundits that give you this horse are poor themselves. Next, you've got to get by your friends. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future, right? You're hanging out the pub, belching and farting. Those people that you're going to the sports bars, those are your friends. Then there's just general pessimists. Then there's your own guilt. Do I deserve to be wealthy beyond measure? Then there's fear, false expectations appearing real. And then there's this plain society that wants to hold you down. Strange times are there 
are these in which we live when the old and the young are taught falsehoods in school. And, in, and, and the person that uh, does tell the truth is called a lunatic and a fool. But John Lennon said it a little differently. Being honest may not get you many friends, but it will always get you the right ones. And what I want you to do from this point forward, no matter if you hated what I said or the way I said it, is choose carefully the people that you associate with. Warren, back when he used to send out tweets, Buffett that is, you will continue to suffer if you have an emotional reaction to everything that is said to you. True power is sitting back and observing things with logic and power is restraint. True power is restraint. If words control you, that means everyone else can control you. Breathe and take, let things pass. In my day, they used to say sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Now it's just the opposite. There are major universities in this country, in this, on this planet that have safe rooms, that have safe buildings, that if life gets, becomes too stressful, you go to that building. If your adult child needs a safe space to avoid offensive words, you failed as a parent. Most of us care what other people say, and most people care what other people think. And if you can just reduce that emotional baggage just a little, you have no idea how much freer you're gonna be and how much more you're gonna accomplish in your life. Most people just have poor habits. And uh, you know, I've had these same habits for about 50 years now. When I do feel wimpish, I just say, what's wrong with you? you? Come on. And, and I just go out and do it. And, and, and I know that if I hadn't built up these habits 20, 30 years ago, you know, at, at age 70, I certainly wouldn't be doing this. I mean, good habits are hard to come by. But what's even harder to come by are people that have good habits that you can be around. Machiavelli said, you know, a ruler is judged by who he surrounds himself with. If I were to decide what kind of person you were or you were by the people that you are closest to, what would I think of you? How would I judge you? So people don't spend enough time selecting that peer group, even Correct. if they have the good habits. You're Correct. saying that's not enough. Yeah, because they go to okay. default. Okay. What are some of your other good habits? High performance. I never give tacit approval, but I go out of my way to make sure that if I hear both, I tell them it's both. Keeps you with the right people. It Correct. Gets your message out loud and clear. Correct. All right. No tacit approval. Good. Give me a couple more. Sam Walton's uh, sundown rule. That means that before he left the office every day, Everything on his desk, every message that came in, he answered. So I clear my desk every day. All right, so over communicate and other people should too. That's the thing that most of you lack in is time management. You don't, the reporting system I use is the reporting system I use as a young officer with NATO. And it's basically, what are you, you going to do? The, uh, what are your goals for the day? What did you accomplish yesterday? And uh, challenges. And then the following week, you didn't, you know, when you say what you accomplished, if what you accomplished doesn't relate back to the goals you had set for the week, then there's a disconnect. Well, if you said you were gonna do this on Monday and then the next week you didn't do it, not only not, you, didn't you do it on Monday, you didn't do it the whole week. And you know, challenges come up, speed bumps, I call speed bumps. You broke your leg, you did this, you did that, you know. The, uh, now to me, the, the, those aren't speed bumps, you know. When I showed up for my meeting with Klaus Kleinfeld in a wheelchair with a drip, well, I was almost dead three days before. I mean, that, that's commitment. Kids are not programmed for success, but once in a while there are kids that are programmed. That's little Tiger Woods when he's three years old on television, showing him how to hit a golf ball. The Williams sisters were programmed for success since they were little. I was programmed by accident. What have you done to program your children for success? My dad only had one goal for me growing up, to keep me alive till I reached the age of reason. So my mother spent her whole life trying to make me what she wasn't. Can you say the same for you, your parents, your children? No. So I'm not here by an accident. And yet I still push the envelope. What you, I believe with all my heart, you were meant to achieve. I believe, and this is the only religious thing I'm gonna say, is I believe whoever the put us here, however the we got here, we were put here to be all we can be. 
not a fraction thereof.